today we are exploring one of the most architecturally beautiful and ancient temple in Pedne Taluka that is Murvir Devasthan dedicated to uh, Shri Murvir that is also Mahadev. This temple is located in Malpe village of Pedne Taluka. It's just 5 minutes drive from Pedne city and some 15 minutes drive from the new Mopa airport. From the highway which connects Goa to Mumbai, it's just a half a kilometer detour. So when you're traveling from this highway, you can definitely come and visit this beautiful temple. Mahadev here is in Swayambhu form. Swayambhu literally means uh, something that is emerged directly from the earth. So Swayam means self and Bhu is earth. So the temple's antiquity goes back very ancient. Because it is Swayambhu, there is no way to uh, tell you exact how old it is. So when we talk about architecture of the temple or how old any temple is, so one is how old is the shrine. Shrine is the main Garbhagruha. In the temple, what is the most important thing is the Garbhagruha or the deity himself. So uh, there is a deity and around it then the temple develops. The murti could be old and temple, the architecture, the building keeps changing with time. So the local legend here is there was a king named Mururaj and uh, because he built the temple, the temple got its name Murvir. The temple that we see now uh, has typical Maratha period or typical uh, some Portuguese elements also and uh, the architecture that we see is uh, almost 200 to 300 years old. This Murviri temple is also famous for its Kavi art and some murals. So what is a mural and what is a Kavi art? So Kavi art, uh, you can see this in my other videos of dedicated to Kavi. Kavi art, what we do is we put a layer of lime, then we put a layer of mud and then we etch out. In mural, it is like how we do our normal watercolors. You take colors and you paint. So here you have, uh, which are typical Maratha period paintings, uh, only few of that have remained now and they are in mural style. What means is they have painted it directly using colour. So these colours are natural colours, they are organic natural colours. In the paintings here you can find the Shavdar and certain scenes from the uh, Hindu uh, Puran and Itihas. Here behind me you can see the first one, there is Samudra Manthan. On the right side you have different deities first one Brahma you can easily identify and left side you have different demons and around it it is now very much faint but you can see they have depicted the 14 Ratna that we got from Samudra Mantan. so when the churning of the ocean happened a lot of things came out of it uh, so they are all depicted there second we see uh, Krishna Leela that is Krishna holding Govardhan Parvat so you can see in the first smaller picture here, Krishna is playing flute, that is Venu Gopal. Venu is flute and Gopal is name for Krishna. Then second you have Govardhan Dhari Krishna. So he is holding uh, Govardhan mountain. You can see they have shown mountain like big rocks. And Krishna is holding it with his hand and he is also playing flute. And other Gopals are holding it by their stick. And down there you can also see different cows which is a typical scene in Gokul. So there we have depiction of Devi in her Mahishasur Mardini form. She is holding Mahishasur is in form of a buffalo. He was a buffalo demon and uh, he had the boon. Uh, he could turn, take form of buffalo anytime. So what Devi does is he tries to escape by taking form of a buffalo and then Devi holds him. This is the story of Navratri. On the ninth day, she manages to catch hold of him and takes out the human body from the buffalo's uh, body outside. So you can see on the head part, there is a human being or the demon's head and Devi is literally holding him by his hair and just pulling him out. So you can see the kind of force she applies. So her leg is like this and she holds the buffalo by just one, uh, just her one leg. That is the Mahima of uh, Mahishasur Mardini and that's why we uh, celebrate Navratri. So this war happened between Devi and Mahishasur for ninth day and the tenth day when he was killed, the, that was the day of the victory which was Dasera or Vijayadashmi. So this whole back panel that is kindly faded because it's directly exposed to more moisture and sunlight here but you can see it's a scene of war and you can see there are two chariots Rath that is one side one Rath is here another is there and they are both fighting. So the only common war story that we know in India is of Mahabharat the biggest war that happened. So, uh, so in iconography iconography gives you uh, hints in the stories and that helps you 
discovered the panels or discovered the images even if it's uh, it's faded or even if it's just broken so here you can see on this rath on top is uh, hanuman is seated so that was the rath of arjuna as per the mahabharat story because on one side you have arjun it is a very obvious guess that it is the fight between karna and arjun okay uh, even though the image is very much faded the painting has faded you can uh, see different styles of uh, drapery you can see different mukut that is the crowns uh, and or the head gears you could say and different styles of battles or weapons that were used in uh, practice so you can see they are st- uh, all of them are seated on horses some of them are fighting with swords and some of them are fighting with bhala which is spears so as you continue the production on the right side uh, you see many more uh, images also but unfortunately because the cement has been put here this concrete we have lost some of the designs because you can see there is one panel on top and second panel we have lost designs or they are just half so because of which we have lost the context of the story on the other side when you saw uh, images like mahishasur mardini which are single panels or uh, govardhan dhari uh, gopal so that is easier to identify but here because the context is lost we don't know what the story is you can see there are uh, some kingly like person seated on the throne because why i can say it's a king or somebody royal is behind each person there there is somebody holding the chhatra or the chauri so that was the pri- uh, privilege only the royals had uh, next to that you can see there is somebody like a lady seated there at the entrance and they are they have come to buy or i don't know what they are interacting but you can see different mud pots also on the right side you have some incarnations from the dashavatara so dashavatara means 10 incarnations of shri vishnu here you have the first one that is matsya in form of a fish from the mouth of the fish uh, shri vishnu is just emerging out then you have kurma which is tortoise uh, then you have varaha here you can see that on his nose varaha is the form of a wild boar and he is holding earth they have shown the earth in a spherical form then you have narsimha narsimha is shown uh, seated on the door you can see narsimha here and he is just cutting out hiranyakashipu open and then you have pandurang or vithal in some of the traditions uh, amongst the dashavataras the ninth incarnation we know buddha as the ninth incarnation some traditions take vithal or pandurang as the ninth incarnation of shri vishnu so here you have vithal seat, uh, standing on a brick and holding his hands like this which is very typical iconography of pandurang so in the first panel there you can see 1 2 3 4 5 of the avtaras of the dashavatar and below second they are only like what you can we can faintly see and they are half lost so here we can see one person walking with a bow which we can guess it could be shri ram and this could be either vaman and here maybe we had parshuram and krishna we don't know it's lost because of this concretization in the main hall that is a sabha mandap you can see some old kavi designs also below each arc you have this kavi geometric designs there are different patterns on different arches okay behind you have this one warrior this is also this is not a mural this is done in kavi you can see that the whole mandap was beautifully decorated with paintings but because it's exposed to lot of moisture and humidity it is destroyed with time This temple is located in such a beautiful biodiversity hotspot. You can see there is water on all four sides. Just next to the temple you have the spring and the water flows on all four sides and you have a beautiful uh, trees and the plantations nearby. So just behind the temple you have a small hill range and uh, ar- the whole temple is surrounded by forest as well as a plantation. And uh, from you can see from behind that there's this water is coming from the hills directly. and it's just falling here the sound of this falling gushing water is really beautiful and apt place for coming here take take blessings of mahadev and meditate just next to the temple you have uh, water coming from the spring and it is channelized into a small temple tank here so this is a natural fresh water people come here to take a dip and uh, wash their feet clean themselves and then take darshan So this taluka was one of the last talukas to be taken over by the Portuguese. This was under their new conquest which happened in the 18th century. 
so because of that uh, many temples which are original temples here survived uh, and thrived so though you see now a uh, influence of portuguese architecture different religious expressions different religious customs survived here in its original form many temples from areas like bardish which was taken over by portuguese in their first conquest when the portuguese were destroying the temple they moved to the spedne taluka here also you find a lot of legacy remains of the savantwadi bhosle family as well from this video onwards we are adding a new segment that is of a book recommendation or book review on any topic related to history of bharat or history of goa so uh, in this video i'm going to introduce you to one of my most favorite books i've been reading this since i was in 5th standard i was in, and this book is the one which fascinated me to know more about the rich heritage of goa so the book is titled as kaleidoscopic goa it is a cultural atlas written by dr pandurang fardesai this book kaleidoscopic goa is a beautiful cultural atlas for anybody who wants to know in deep about cultural heritage of goa This is written by Dr. Pandurang Fardesai and it was edited by Dr. Nanda Kumar Kamath. Both are well-known researchers in this field of uh, history and heritage of Goa. So how I got introduced to this book, it was designed by my mama, uh, Sanjay Bhandare, and any time I would go to his home for vacations, I would sit the whole vacation with this book. So as you can see in this book, they've given in detail about the flora, fauna different occupations then cultural places different uh, cultural concepts different festivals so it gives in detail about each festival and also on map on where it is practiced so uh, as i was growing up this kind of fascinated me very much for knowing more about all these art forms and rich cultural heritage of goa this was our efforts to show you hidden gems in the hinterlands of goa and bring out the real history and heritage of goa and bharat to the world if you appreciate and support our efforts please like and comment on this video and share it with your friends uh, and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel